Well, welcome back to another episode of Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike's back. What's up, dude? What's, up? What's going on, man? How the you doing? Uh, Well, let's see. So you guys didn't realize it um, just because Derek and I stacked our schedules essentially leading up to everything, but uh, I was gone for eight nights, nine days. Um, it was a lot. So a lot of travel back and forth, but I went on my honeymoon, so I'm back. And I'm fired up because now the rest of the month is super busy. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of meetings, a um, couple interviews, and then we basically have right now, uh, it's, it's literally the middle of September. So we have... Kind of wild how fast this month's been going, huh? Yeah, which is, yeah. it's How fast this year's been going. <laughs> We're almost at 2022, bro. Which I'm not, you know... Not against it by any means, but yeah, well, I don't really know if we have a choice, but <laughs> correct. Yeah, time time is of the essence, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, right now to date, uh, real time, it's it's September thirteenth when we record this, and we have interviews set to go live until October eighth. So, gives you an idea of our backlog. But then also we have a lot of other stuff going on between a few things with the state that we're working with them on a couple different events, and we're growing. So diving into the weekly recap, uh, what have you been doing the last like 10 days, dude? Nothing, bro. We haven't talked it. Like we really didn't talk much, which is. No, because I'm like, dude, focus on your honeymoon, bro. <laughs> I know, but I was, dude, it, took, it literally took me like two yeah, days you know. to decompress because yeah. I was just like, okay, what do we got? Yeah. I just wanted to keep talking. No, the, uh, <clears throat> I took vacation from work too. So, no kidding. Yeah, dude. So it was the most calm slash annoying week of my life. Why? Because I've never been in a spot where I didn't have to do anything. There wasn't podcast stuff to do because I got all of my editing done before you left. I didn't have work stuff to do. So I was just doing nothing. I was doing stuff around the house. I went like I went golfing once and I was just relaxing and just decompressing the entire time. That's I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah. I was stoked, man. Dude, that's sweet. Did yeah. Gina like it? Oh, yeah. I mean, she was working, so I didn't even have her. I was just home by myself doing the Lord's work. Yeah, and you were just drinking <laughs> pots of coffee. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. And I was going to the gym. I got home, and I just got my coffee, sat in front of the TV, watched a little bit of TV, was outside after that. It was just like a perfect week off. But at the same time, I was like, I need to do something. <laughs> we need I'm going to go insane. I didn't have anything to do. Yeah. You weren't there, and I don't want to bother by texting you. Everyone else that I knew was working, including Gina. So I was just sitting there like, what do I do now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were points that... So, all right. I was seven hours ahead of you, mm -hmm. and Europe's on a different time schedule. Everybody goes to bed at like 11.30 midnight. That's normal. Yeah. Everyone has dinner at like 8 p.m. So from sick. 2 to 5, Europe time... Everyone sleeps and, like, naps. So, and seven hours before that, I'm thinking about what time is it back home because what if I can post and, like, help out Derek? <laughs> like, is he busy at work? Because like, I thought you worked the whole yeah. the whole time. Um, but, yeah, it was nuts. There was a couple of days where I was just like, can, can I do this? And you're just like, can you not be weird? I'm like, I'm sorry. But, yeah, dude, it was sweet. Um, that's sweet. So what did you do around the house? Mow the lawn, did some weeding, yeah. cleaned the whole house. How'd that feel? Doesn't that it feel stuff. good? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to get a deep clean, bro. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. Yeah. It's oddly satisfying. Yeah. Took Cleo for a couple walks, you know, just doing the doing the retirement life. That's really what I was doing. I like that. Hell, yeah. That's mint. I went and I distilled to Justin, too, one of those days. Yeah. How did that? Uh, what, tell me about that. So, Justin was actually gone. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. They, uh, I'm not going to say where he was, because I don't know if that's public. But um, <clears throat> he was going off doing some ventures that are going to improve the business. I'll leave it at that, and I'll tell you off air. So I was there with the other distiller. His, his name is also Justin. Was he debating with a judge? Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, I was there with another Justin, and he taught me through the entire rope. So, like, the mash was already done and put into the, the pot still. Okay. And everything like that. Or the column still, whatever it was. Uh, and then we did the process of once that has been done, we have to now put it into the tanks for it to be then ready to be bottled. So we did the heads, 
the hearts and the tails. And he was telling me like the process behind how he sniffs the alcohol as it's coming out of the still to figure out when the heads are done and when the hearts are starting. So in the distilling world, you have three different main parts of your whiskey. You have the, your heads, you have your hearts, and your tails. Mainly what makes up your whiskey flavoring is the hearts. That's the entire process of the whiskey. The heads are very high alcohol content, and if you get a product that has a lot of the heads in it, it's going to be very high alcohol. You're going to taste a lot of ethanol, and it's not going to be that good. The hearts is the meat of the distillation process. That's when the alcohol starts not turning into the flavor, but a lot of the al- alcohol that has already risen to the top and is evaporating is gone. So now it's more of a ratio between the whiskey, mash, and the alcohol left. Hmm. So that's a majority of the hearts, and that's what you want to capture. Now, the tails are interesting, and I don't know about this. The tails are where you're getting a lot of the grassy, um, like wet hay type smell from because it's basically draining the water through the rest of the mash and that's what you're getting i mean obviously it's alcohol but a lot of it's filtering through there's a major there's more mash than there is water so as it's coming through the still the tails you're getting a lot of that mash instead of alcohol content so when you're sniffing this when you're at the head you want to make sure that you're sniffing and you're cutting the heads off and you're you're not you're going to start putting the hearts in when the heads start going off, which means that you're smelling it and you're trying to figure out that sweet spot when it's not as much alcohol and you're getting more of that whiskey flavor. Mm. So he's like sniffing. He's like pouring some out of the still, putting it down on the table. Like pouring it out of the still, putting it down on the table, like at different hour increments. And he's like, smell these and let me know which one smells better. So like we would smell them and I'd be like, oh, I think this one smells better. And he's like, me too. Let's stop it here. And then we would start putting it into the fermentation tanks. That's fascinating. And then as the hearts went, it was like a couple hours when we got to the tail, he did the same thing. He kept pouring some out of the still, putting it down, pouring some out of the still. And he's like, when are we getting too wet grassy and wet hay that we want to say we're done? Yeah. And what's interesting about that is Justin Brink, the distiller there at Hartman's, the other distiller, obviously, besides Justin Hartman. He just went down to Moonshine University and went through the Stave and Thieve Executive Bourbon course. And they were saying that you want more tails than you want heads because the more tails you have, the more dynamic of a flavor range you have. Hmm. So it's okay to have more tails than heads, but you don't want too many tails because then it'll ruin the taste of the whiskey. Right. But you, it's okay to have some tails because that's what drives the whiskey flavor. That's sweet. It's wild, man. Yeah. It's really cool. And then while that was doing all that weird bottling, I was there with uh, a newer employee. I think she started like six months ago. Her name is Molly, I think. Uh, she was doing all the bottling. We were bottling the Loganberry Vodka. And packaging it up, so it was cool. It was cool to learn the ropes on the distillery behind, the like scenes. the bar, yeah, yeah, and actually figuring out how to do all this stuff. Yeah, it was fascinating. One day we'll do it together. Hell yeah! So. If you can finally get a vacation day. Well, yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> but well, yeah, but how was Greece, bro? So, uh, yeah, for those that don't know, my honeymoon was in Greece. Yeah, uh, welcome everybody. Right, there was a lot of <sighs> logistically leading up to it. It was a lot of back and forth. One thing you realize as soon as you leave the country is how political literally everything is. So um, if you if you tell friends or family, hey, I'm going to Greece, then the first thing they say is, I thought their border were closed. It's like always negative. It's like, shut up, dude. Like, oh. it's there's a lot that went into this other than your opinion. Right. Right? Like, my favorite quote ever. <laughs> and it, it's so fitting for this. So. That was the best quote ever. Yeah. <clears throat> Leading up to the honeymoon. I knew that there was a lot of logistical moving parts and pieces to the big picture plan that I wanted to solidify. So I reached out to a friend of mine and she's been, I couldn't even tell you the number of countries. I can't really quantify it, but she's done nothing but travel since she was like 17 internationally. She's been all over the place. Uh, She worked in Spain for multiple months going into years teaching English to Spanish speaking children. Mm -hmm. um, And then she's fluent in both languages, obviously. And she is now a travel agent. So I reached out to her and I said, Hey, obviously we've been talking about this trip since like circa Oh five. You want to sit down with me and actually like hammer this out. And she goes, sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Come into my office. I said, okay, no problem. So I did. And because she's already been to Greece, her current employer started working with different partners in Greece so that they can then offer Greece as a, Uh, viable vacation outlet Mm -hmm. to their clients because they generally specialize in like Spain or South America or Spanish speaking countries. So 
I was like, okay, sweet. And we did. We hammered everything out. I told her, you know, I really want to get, you know, these five things solidified and then all the working pieces in the interim, you know, do your thing and you have free reign. She's like, okay, no problem. Sounds good. And the few things that I wanted, I was like, hey, obviously I want to be near the Blue Domes as much as possible. Um, I do want to go to Santorini. If you have another option for an island, I don't want to go to Mykonos. Mm -hmm. Um, I just kind of want to get like a a nice feel for this. Why didn't you want to go to Mykonos? Just because it's it's touristy? Well, I mean, Santorini is touristy, but it's, it's all like... It's just party, right. party, party, party all day, all night, nonstop parties. You wake up, you drink, you go to bed, you drink. It's, it's just like literally nonstop partying. I was like, I don't really want that. It's a honeymoon. Like I right. just want to kind of get a different vibe. So, um, and then I said, outside of those things, I really want like privacy. I want like a, our own private plush pool and hot tub, like combo thing with a view. Like I want to have the sunsets right in our room. Like if we're going to do this, let's just do it. Mm-hmm. And then make memories and she's like okay sounds good there's a lot of interesting dialogue when it comes to using a travel agency and i hate all of it and the reason being is because people don't realize the value that you get sure when you actually do work with them they just think you're spending more money for nothing which is totally incorrect and it's a myth in my opinion so a lot of the to and from and international travel in general is extremely stressful, especially if your partner, like my wife, has never left the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I don't count Canada because that's a joke. So count Mexico. uh, I mean, I think it's a more viable international destination. (laughs) But not if you go to like Cancun or Jamaica or something like that. Well, also because you literally have to go there. Otherwise, you're going to die if you drink the water or from the cartels. So pick your poison. (laughs) No pun intended. Um, but yeah, so this is so good. Yeah, it is. So she came back and she goes, okay, this is what you're getting. Um, this is your trip. So what we did and to finish my last point, the logistical point A to point B stuff, they take care of, which is huge. And I'll dive into that. So our trip was, uh, three nights, three nights and two nights. And the general idea was getting a different stay to watch the same sunset, but then split things up mentally so that you're getting a different vantage point and experience and your trip isn't stagnant. Because if you stay at the same hotel for eight nights, you're going to get bored. Absolutely. So the first hotel was a hotel. Um, they kind of run on like a, we're, we're a higher end place. They give you like a welcome wine sangria, white wine sangria drink as soon as you walk in. Um, obviously, they transport you from the airport to the hotel, which was great. Um, give you a bottle of water, give you a tour, kind of give you the lay uh, lay of the land as you drive up to the hotel, which in Santorini from the airport to where we were staying, which is Ia, um, and spelled O-I-A, but it's pronounced Ia. Um, It's the furthest northern point of the island. Uh, That's also like the most famous. If you see any Santorini postcards of the Blue Dome Church, that's in Ia. Mm. So we went up to there for the first hotel stay for three nights, and then it was the same thing. what I didn't know is that we got upgraded from a suite to a villa. So the villa was two rooms, two floors, beyond bougie. Like, oh, yeah. it was disgusting. How'd you get upgraded? I I don't know. I didn't ask. They I just know, said, God bless. They were like, we know that you're Buffalo happy hour. Uh, basically, yeah, I'm a Buffalo celebrity, <laughs> so no big deal. Uh, which we'll dive into that as well. But basically, the stayed there for three nights. It was awesome. We did the spot treatment there. I got my first facial of my life. Um I'm moving on from that because yeah, that's what she said. Let's keep it G-rated. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and it was it was incredible, super relaxing. We tanned, and the first day we basically just hung out, got over the jet lag, and chilled. Second day, we got our buggy delivered to our hotel, and it was a, it's literally like a it's a Polaris side by side. Nice. So they're like, here you go, you're all set. Here's how you use it. Like, do you have any questions? I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I grew up in these things. Like, I'm ready to rock. <laughs> so, island driving's obviously, you know live your life god yeah. bless you know so <laughs> it's it's just take charge so do people have cars there yeah but they're real small yeah because it's f- how things work in europe if it's a one lane road it's a two lane road if it's a two lane road it's a three lane road and people just pass there's like gotcha. solid lines don't matter double solids don't matter like it's do they even have them there free rain oh yeah they exist but like free rain but nobody cares correct the (laughs) structure here in the u.s is so much more strict and followed so we're in our buggy the first thing we did was we went all the way south because that's where the black sand beaches were because obviously santorini is a volcano Mm -hmm. so 
Went to the Black, uh, Black Sand Beach, hung out there, walked around, took some photos. It was cool. Their sand is not... If take our sand and expand it in size like dilate it and it, that's literally what it is it's just smaller rocks it's not necessarily like fine grain sand like right. it is here so it's super exfoliated when you walk through it like your skin is super soft it's insane plus you add the salt water from the Aegean Sea mm -hmm. it's nuts so did that um, also big picture stuff weather was perfect the whole time it was 80 83 degrees breeze the entire time because obviously it's an island in the Aegean Sea right. so it's similar to Aruba for those that have been there and then it never dropped below like 73 degrees at night so it was perfect no rain ever um, the whole trip so did that did the black sand beaches came up and then we stopped at a winery uh, called Santos Wines and Santo Wines is incredible they're basically like the most popular Santorini exported wine uh, that exists there mm -hmm. that their production's nuts did that did a full tasting, hung out, had some cheese. It was great. All the food in Europe is obviously incredible. Went back to the hotel, hung out. Third night, um, third night we basically got ready to leave because we had to transfer on a ferry, and then our ferry got moved. So this is a crazy story. So our ferry was supposed to depart at like 3 p.m. So we were going to wake up, have Greek yogurt, fresh fruit with honey, and a cappuccino and chill out. Well, all of a sudden we got a, f um, we got a text at like 11 p.m the night before saying hey your ferry got canceled and the next available ferry is actually early in the morning at and it departs at like seven so you have to be to the port at like five damn and we're like okay like no worries like it is what it is frago you know so um what was nuts was the buggy had to be returned with a full tank of gas because that's how i received it someone running a mm -hmm. car well it's midnight at this point and i'm like Okay, the only open gas station I think is in Fira, which is in the direct middle of the island, which is like 25 minutes away. So I got to figure out like how I can get to Fira. And luckily I got T-Mobile, so their international plans disgusting. Mm -hmm. So I, I basically had like full service. It wasn't even like I left. Um, so I get in the buggy and I leave at midnight. Night ops, driving around, lights on, it was sick. And I pull up to a gas station that's like 20 minutes away. Um, that I hoped was still open because their hours are 24 hours. And typically if the gas station, because it's not self-serve, mm -hmm. um, they come out, it's like New Jersey, they pump the yeah. gas for you. So I was like, okay, if I get there and they're closed, even though the, if they are open 24 hours but there's no attendant, you can typically still use a card and work the pump yourself. Okay. And I was like, okay, sounds good. So I get there, totally shut off. No one's there. It's black. Like, everything's closed. I'm like, damn. So that now I know, like, the contingency is in the middle of Fira. And Fira is the direct middle of the island. It's always super busy. Tons of people. I was like, oh, goodness. So as I'm trying to figure out if everything's open or closed, this couple shows up from Toronto. Hmm. And I believe his name was Peter. And he's like, hey, my name's... Yeah, I think it was Pete. And his f fiance, who was, like, Cuban... And she was his. She was just like Alexis from Schitt's Creek. Nice, hysterical, like same personality. So she was like short and feisty, and just <laughs> I, she's a Cuban chick, right? Yeah. So he pulls up, and he's like, "Hey, are they closed?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Dude, I'm about to run out of gas." I'm like, "Well, dude, the nearest gas station is like eight minutes away. You want to follow me? Like, do you have service?" He's like, "No." I was like, "You want to follow me?" And he's like, "I'm about to run out of gas." And I was like. I don't hmm I don't <laughs> yeah. know what that means. So and then all of a sudden he's like, Hold on, let me try to turn around. So he turns his buggy on. He's dead. Shut out of gas. And she's like oh my god <laughs> and I start dying laughing and then he just looks at her and it, you could tell in his face he's like this is on me mm -hmm. and I'm like waiting for his response he goes I knew I should have filled up last night and she's like uh yeah hello <laughs> and just rips him for it and I was like damn he's like well how much gas do you have and I was like I got a half tank like you can climb in but there's only two seats right. like if you sit on his lap I can drive us to Fira. Maybe they got like a gas can. You can buy it, fill it up, and then we can just leave this here. I'll put. I'll help you push it up the hill. Yeah. Throw it in nooch, and then we'll we'll be good. So we push this thing up. He's like, dude, you're such a lifesaver. I was like, well, you know, not everyone from New York sucks. So we talked to a, a couple locals because I'm like, dude, I don't know which gas station in Fira is the only one that's 24 hours right. because all of these on Google Maps is saying they're open 24 hours, but clearly there's not. Now there's only one on the entire island that's open. So I grab a local, and I'm like, hey, can you tell me which one is the, the only open gas station? He's like, yeah, it's an Echo one. I'm like, yeah, but there's five. And they're all saying 24 hours. And he's like, hold on, pull up map. I was like, okay. So what's great for us but horrible for us, 
everyone around the world speaks English. We're the only pricks that only right. speak English. So what's their main language there? Greek. What is that? I don't even know if I've ever heard somebody speak Greek. Um. So, uh, cheers is Yasmus. Um, Sounds he- Jewish. Hello is Yamas. Um, good morning is Kalimara. Um, and then I love calamari. Similar, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, F. Uh, hold on, I got it here. I so what I do when I travel is I create a notepad on my phone sure. of like greetings, so I'm not a total prick. So. Um, F. Callisto is thank you. Theo is two. So I'm learning like different things and just writing it mm-hmm. down so I'm not a total, you know, prick. So local local pulls up the maps on my phone and I'm like, here you go, here's the map. And he's like, okay, it's this one. And he clicks it. I was like, all good, thank you. So jump in, they climb in, we drive there. Fear is a mob scene. It's like it's midnight and people are partying like it's 5 p.m. <laughs> so like post bills win parties. <laughs> Nuts, dude. People all over the streets. So I was like, oh, God. So we we get to the gas station. I fill up. He, he hands up. Luckily, they have a gas can. Oh, cool. So he gets that, fills up. I drive him back. He's all set and good to go. I say, you know, go Bills and leave. So I get back to the hotel. Colleen packed her bag. She falls asleep. We're only going to get like four hours. And I know she's going to be miserable. So I'm like, okay, first thing we got to do is get her a cappuccino. She'll be right. <laughs> and then food. Because she's like, dude, she was like a toddler. It was so cute. She's like, what about food? Like, what are we doing for lunch? What are we doing for dinner? <laughs> like, everything was just food oriented. I'm like, yeah. can you relax? So um, we, we check out, pay, you know, like a room tab or whatever. And then we got a box of breakfast for both of us provided by the hotel because of the ferry change. I was oh. like, dude, that's incredible. Like, who planned this? And they're like, oh, it's all set. Like, that we, we coordinated that with, with our partner, which, again, travel agency. So, like, they're oh, they're sweet. coming in as, like, guardian angels. I'm sure. like, dude, this is nuts. Like, they, they reconfirmed our, our ferry for us. Like, they got us breakfast. Like, they got us the transport back and forth with the hotel from the room that's to the ferry. Sick. Oh, dude, and we're seven hours ahead so you know they're it's like three through thirty four o'clock here and they're grinding away it's just like oh our clients are across the world like their ferry just canceled and they're all just like busy bees right well this is crazy so then they're updating the app which has the entire trip in the app of like here's your flight confirmations and bookings you don't need service to access anything in the app so if you don't have an international plane you still have all of your documents your travel insurance everything i'm like dude this is sick so Damn. yeah so i'm like okay so we get to the ferry, jump on the ferry. It's a three-hour ferry because they have two other islands to hit after Santorini. Otherwise, direct, it's like 50 minutes. So we're on the slow ferry. It's like the Titanic. I'm like trying not to get seasick. <laughs> we're bopping around because the seas were wild because it was windy. That's why our ferry got canceled. So we get to a smaller island, which is northwest from Santorini, called Falangandros. And Falangandros is like 3,000 years behind, literally by design. So they have amenities, obviously electricity, restaurants, things like that. But like the vibe and the people super old school oh cool so i'm like this is sick they have retaining walls built into cliffs everything's like you know all the monasteries they're all there um which i, I can you guys got to come over because i got to show you a ton of photos it's just wild oh, we but but the whole thing was nuts so we're in falling gondros for three nights and then we got like a picturesque if you go on pinterest and just like type in greece and everything is blue and white the whole town was like that and then mm. that's when we found out the time change when everyone takes like an afternoon nap similar to what they do in spain and we're like, okay, so then we adjusted. We started taking afternoon naps after we tanned by the pool. Like, all these really cool things. And then um, we stayed there for three nights. And then we went back to Santorini for two nights. And then that stay in Santorini was at a <coughs> private estate. And there were five villas on the estate in the direct center of the island, in Fira. Mm-hmm. And that was just, like, not normal. So we were at this private estate. Um, guarded by a gate and walls because walls work moving on and no one else was there and that was by luck that was not planned Mm -hmm. at all so we're we're two people and we have a full staff providing everything we want that like period that's it so I'm like so what like what's going and they're like we'll give you two we're like you're good I'm like okay and they're like, yeah, so come this way. And, like, we, we pull in. We get picked up off the ferry because we take a ferry back. And this time it was a fast ferry, so 50 minutes from Falangandros to Santorini. We get picked up. We're, we're waiting. There's a guy with a sign for with our hotel name. I walk up to him, and I, was, I wave. You know, I give him the Kelly mm-hmm. wave. And he's like, Mr. Kelly? And I was like, yes, sir. And he's like, come. 
I was like, okay, puts my bags like right in the <laughs> right in the van. Everything's a Mercedes. I was like, okay. <laughs> so we get in, like tinted windows, private like private chauffeur drives us all the way up, takes us there. There's a guy in all white waiting, and he's just he's got one arm behind his back, and I'm like, I'm not prepared. <laughs> like, I'm not prepared, not ready. <laughs> And the driver gets out, opens the door, and then all I hear is, hello, Mr. Kelly, welcome. And I'm like, you have, like, <laughs> true good of English. <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. Come to find out, he started in hospitality in the UK, but oh. he's Greek. So he picked up, like, perfect English. Sure. And he was self-conscious. He's like, I'm sorry, my English is rusty. I'm like, you literally speak better than half my friends. <laughs> like, you're fine. So... He's like, I'll give you a tour. And I was like, okay. So we walk through, and then, like, the walls around the estate, like, gain in elevation oh, yeah. with the terrain. And it's all, like, super modern and chic and, like, bougie AF. And I was like, okay. And then there's a – as soon as you walk out, there's, like, a, a dining table area s- setting to your left down this long hallway. And then this three-tiered infinity edge pool built into the cliff. And he's like, so this – is the estate and i'm like what <laughs> are you talking about and he's like we'll show you we'll give you tour and then it's him and his his coworker, and they're like you guys literally haven't seen anything yet like stop freaking out we're like dude this is nuts they have like cabana po- beds that are like queen size beds with cover beanbag chairs everywhere painted rugs on the concrete we're in the direct center of the island facing west so the sun sets in front of the infinity mm-hmm. edge pool and then he's like, lucky for you guys, there's no one booked until after you leave, which is like a one out of 275 booking thing that does, unless like someone privately books this whole thing, which right. is an ungodly amount of money. He's like, so this is like once in a lifetime. I'm like, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> he shows us to our room. There's an outdoor shower, indoor shower, water closet, bedroom. The bed is a water closet. A water closet is uh, what they call restrooms, but it's basically just a, a toilet with its um, a, it's a toilet and then a closed door, and they oh. call that the water closet because then your shower Don't and your sink are separate. Don't call it a bathroom, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, they call it a water closet here in like Uber mansions, where they're like, "Here's your water closet," because it's just a toilet it in makes, its own yeah, space. Comfortable. Yeah, so, I thought it was like an outdoor shower or something, no. or maybe like where you store your pool floaties because you don't know how to swim <laughs> right yeah no <laughs> who wants to go fast swim so um there's an outdoor bed there's our own jacuzzi and then he's like yeah so like the whole property is yours because no one's here i'm like okay so then he's like we'll go down below to see the other levels of the pool i'm like okay so we walked everything is like concrete it's sick um like all their furniture has like cushions on it mm. but it's just made out of like concrete gotcha. yeah, yeah. so we go down the stairs we're surrounded by mediterranean bamboo it's super beautiful it's like really peaceful because it's just a constant breeze and you just like hear it all the time the whole vibe then you go down the stairs bank left and then you see the other tiers of the infinity edge pool and then there's like a built-in cave and there's a hanging stone table and then inside of the cave on the edge of the pool is this built-in ledge that you can sit on in underwater under this cave looking out into fear in the Aegean Sea. And then you see the the southern tip of Santorini right in front of you, and then you see the volcanoes to your right. So you can sit there, but you can still breathe even though it's underwater, Correct. right? Because so you're, you're going up well, a little bit? Well, the, the water level is like up to your chest, and then the cave goes above you, and it's just like this overhang shelter, and then you have this stone chain table hanging in front of you, and then it's just like fl- I'll, I'm going to send you a picture, and then you can drop it in, okay. and then people can it's disgusting it's out of this world <laughs> of course it's all white i was right, like okay obviously. so then you leave the cave area and then there's four queen size beds built into the pool to tan on with like these huge triangle pillows to lean up against and just tan and look out to the aegean sea in the middle of fear and santorini it like stunning then you go up back on top where like the normal level is then they have this like stone wall that becomes an archway with a door and then the path like slopes up and to the left leading to a monastery and then their own grape vines because they make their own wine honey jams and cosmetics like lotions at this estate yeah like the the company that owns the estate makes and manufactures all these products disgusting then they have a private uh, wine cellar downstairs they have a spa downstairs like bouge 
we don't belong. Yeah. Really. So <laughs> then they don't give us like the welcoming glass of white wine sangria. They gave us a welcoming bottle of champagne while we're doing the tour. They're like, drink champagne. We'll walk you around. And Colleen's just like, uh, it was like <laughs> she was living like the housewives on Bravo. Right. So she was not okay. And I'm just like taking it all in, trying not to, you know, trip and make a fool of myself. Right. They have. Um, there was a fire, a hanging fireplace inside my room. There was an air conditioning unit inside the room that looked like a solar panel. I don't even know how it worked. And I worked in HVAC. I'm staring at it like, how does it nuts? It was also a heater, like craziness. Um, outdoor seating area. So yeah, so we stayed there for two nights and then they're like, what time do you want to eat breakfast or what time do you want to eat, um, dinner tonight? And I'm like, I, I don't like sunsets at what like seven thirty so I don't like seven and he's like okay seven he's like what do you want to eat and we're like um I don't know <laughs> like <laughs> whatever man like <laughs> put some fucking food on the plate like I don't even know how to respond to that and he goes well okay so let me explain this. We make everything for you for the meal, including the bread. Like, everything is fresh. Everything. So you tell us what you want to eat and when, and then we will be ready. I'm like, okay, <laughs> perfect. Why don't we just do, like, a Greek salad and um, 7 p.m.? He's like, we were going to do a seafood dish. I'm like, that's fine. He's like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm going to sit down at 7 o'clock and figure this out. So he shows up with, like, this 18 months aged cheese from another island that they grew, basically, with their goats. I'm like, what? okay. <laughs> like, fresh hot bread, two different jams and um, butter. And then he's like, so this is your first spread. Here's some cheese. Um... Like, do you want sparkling water or still water? I'm like, still, like, I don't want gas in my water. And he's like, okay, sounds good. So we poured that. He's like, do you want anything to drink? And I'm like, uh, you just gave me water, bud. Yeah, I was like, exactly. I was like, uh, I'm okay. And then Kelly's like, well, let's just do a cocktail. I was like, okay, um, a tequila cocktail. He's like, sounds good. The best thing I've ever drank. I'm like, I don't even drink tequila. And this is like ridiculous. So then, do the play setting. There's a marble rock sitting on the plate, and that was that was the, the holder to keep the napkin on the plate was this rock of marble. Like, none of it made sense. We didn't belong. So by the second night, they realized we're, we're normal people. It was too much. <laughs> too much. Like, we had our own private staff. None of it made sense. But, yeah, and then the last night, um, we got surprised with a photo shoot. Seriously? So we had a full honeymoon photo shoot at this estate for like an hour and a half that encompassed 837 photos. Holy shit. Right. So we have our honeymoon photo shoot that's going to be sent to us in 12 days. The photographer was Greek. Great Who organized English. it? The, the agency. Seriously? Yeah, it was a gift. One of the gajillion gifts that they gave <laughs> throughout the entire thing. I Like, Ridiculous. The whole trip was ridiculous. So when the so use a travel agent. That's what we're getting at here. Yeah, and if you're local and you want to use the people I use, and you want to go somewhere in South America, or you want to go to Greece, um, I mean, uh, they have friends. If you want to go somewhere that they don't mm -hmm. work with too, so yeah, I mean, the whole thing was just not normal. Um, I can't wait until I tell you about my honeymoon because it's going to be the exact opposite. You're like, we sat by this triple tier. Infinity pool, and I'm like, well, we went to a graveyard, and this was a thing, <laughs> yeah. because that's what we wanted to Place do. Place is packed, man. People are dying to get in there. But, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm i very happy for you. It seemed like the perfect trip for you. Yeah. Did yeah. you Were you at the point, because most times people are like, you know what, it was good, but I wanted to come home. Did Not at all. No, the only, <laughs> literally, the only reason I wanted to come home was to see you and Sam. Oh, that was adorable. Yeah. Yeah, big fact, big trust. But yeah, I mean, there's like, I miss the podcast. Like, I miss doing this and hanging out with you and talking and, and just, you know, joking. But yeah, and then seeing Sam. But other than that, no. Like, the food is so much better. Is it? Did um, you feel better eating it? Yes, dude. It was just like deployment. Yeah. It, it, 
everything is so much cleaner. And Greek salads have no lettuce in them, so it's just layered in, you know, oil. And then, oh, dude, all right, here, you ready? Our ferry coming back to Santorini was on time. However, the people that were staying at the last estate that we stayed at, they did like a late checkout, so our room wasn't ready, mm. which meant that they wanted to clean the entire property. So they're like, hey, your room isn't ready, so we got you reservations for your lunch taken care of. And we're like, dude, we ate like an hour and a half ago. And he's like, no, well, your lunch is all set. So, <laughs> so your chauffeur is going to take you from the port to the restaurant, eat lunch, and then and then we'll drive you, you, you know, just like text your driver when you're ready to be picked up, and then he'll drive you to the estate. I'm like, okay. And then Colleen's just like, oh, we live it. Like, because now she's like used to it. And I'm like, I'm not, I will never get used to this. Like, what does that even mean? So, yeah, we were, we were just like floating little bees just enjoying our trip and then we had guardian angels just like moving and doing things for us and i was like uh, whatever you know yolo i guess it was ridiculous that's wild yeah a lot of people don't understand that all this like back and forth and like the late checkout the late ferry lunch all this stuff wouldn't have happened if you didn't have a travel agent and you're in a different country like dude we didn't bring bank cards because right. they always get hacked yeah. i had no way to withdraw cash you also don't know what ATM to use. So what did you do? Just brought a ton of cash with you? No. I didn't bring a ton of cash. I brought I brought some cash and then I just used my card. Oh, and then I informed oh, I, gotcha, I informed gotcha. the credit union, yeah. and, you know, international <clears throat> travel which they're like for some odd reason you're never in New York, so we're just going to like <laughs> not update you when you use your card. I was like, "All right, sounds good." I was like, "I'll just monitor it myself and yeah. then let you know if something's weird." So, yeah, and you know, we just used the card and everything was good. So, that's the safest way to go about it. And that's why I couldn't get gas today on the way here. Spoiler alert, I always try to get gas before we record because otherwise I'm like 35 minutes Correct. early. So um, I dumped my wallet and then only took necessary cards right. to make sure I didn't lose anything or get hacked. So I didn't refill my wallet once we got home. But yeah, ridiculous. Dude, complimentary wine and beer on the flight, which was nine and a half hours. I watched really good movies. Um, and then on the way home, I was trying to adjust to the time zone, and I didn't sleep at all. Yeah. And you saw a Buffalo person at the airport, huh? I did run. So I'm checking my bag in Athens to fly to Philly, and all I hear is go Bills. And I look to my right because that's where it came from. And I'm like, go Bills. And I smile, and he's like, where are you all from? I was like, we're from Hamburg. And he's like, I'm from Hamburg. I'm like, we're in Athens, Greece. <laughs> like, what are you talking? The, the population in Hamburg is like 500 people. <laughs> like, this, this makes like no sense. So all of a sudden, um, his, I, th I think it was his daughter's husband or fiance or boyfriend or something. But um, he's like, you look like Josh Allen. And I'm like, uh, that's the greatest compliment I could ever be told. <laughs> and then the chick working at the airport was like, this is annoying. Like, there's a line of humans <laughs> yeah, behind you. Right. Like, let's hurry it up. And he's like, you look good in shorts. I'm like, never skip lug day. And I'm like, here's my suitcase. Like, you know, because obviously Josh Allen looks incredible in shorts. I By the way, Josh, if, if you want to be on, it's, you know, it, it'll be a normal conversation, <laughs> I promise. I won't stutter too much. Maybe all the time. Yeah, it would not be normal. No. Anything but. Correct. But I'm glad you had fun. So now we have to uh, focus on your honeymoon and uh, make sure you're set. And then we'll still quite a ways away though. We'll let we'll let Gina plan the wedding, and then you and I and whoever you work with will plan the honeymoon. One thousand percent. Oh, it's I already got a compliment. She's like, you're way farther ahead than anybody I've ever worked <laughs> with. So you're fine. You've got a lot of time. Like yeah, I know, kind yes. of type A. Correct for some things. Yeah, but yeah. So speaking of Josh Allen. You didn't watch the Bills game, did you? No, I was flying. So I watched the highlights on YouTube when I got to Philly, and I was waiting for the flight for Philly to Buffalo, which, by the way, that was hysterical because we had, like, the smallest gate in Philly's airport, and it was, like, 14 <laughs> seats. So um, I guess Buffalo's not a hot commodity. <laughs> so the questions that I have was, what's up with all the drops? I heard about a lot of holding penalties on the offensive line, but... I didn't see any because it was just the highlights, and, you know, that's a negative play, so it's not going to be a highlight reel. Uh, TJ Watt got paid, so I guess he was happy to play. And the overthrows for the easy touchdowns was kind of frustrating, but at the same point, like, I can kind of 
it wasn't terribly overthrown right. by any means. Yeah. I feel like if Sanders dove, he would have caught it. I I was at the game, too. I saw this. So, one, I'll do it in reverse order because I can't remember the first thing you said. So, first thing, overthrows. The one throw, Sanders, one, it was very windy. And he probably missed it by, like, two yards. And if Sanders was Diggs or McKenzie or Gabe Davis, I bet the catch would have been made. He hasn't worked with Sanders that much, so you also have to bring that into account too. He hasn't has he doesn't have his thrown dialed in with a fifty yard pass. Like and that's a lot of chemistry to have with the receiver. And just remember, Sanders is super fast, but super new. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm with so you. you have no idea like. To calibrate that type of a throw over that type of distance in the wind is very difficult. Yeah. And then you add him being new to the mix. Anyway, there was another pass that was overthrown by like 15 yards. But that was because the receiver, I can't remember exactly what receiver it was, but there was a miscommunication on the route. So it wasn't Allen overthrowing a streak or a post or anything. It was a miscommunication. It must have been like Allen thought he was running an in post and he actually ran an out route or something like that. The holding penalties, so there was five holding penalties called on our offensive line, three of them on Deion Dawkins. We, our offensive line got destroyed by Pittsburgh's D-line. One, because you have J, or TJ Watt, who is a beast. Uh, he caused a force, uh, sack fumble. He was just a, he destroyed our offensive line. Yeah, he's a Watt. Yeah, and they have three other extreme, or two other very good defensive linemen. And it was just, we were not having a good day on our offensive line. Right. So five holding penalties on that, which did not help anything. There were a couple drops, but honestly, I mean, Sanders dropped a, a an easy one, but he was going to get leveled as soon as he caught that. So, like, whatever. Um, Beasley had a drop, but I don't know if it was behind him. I don't know if it was Allen's fault or if it was Beasley just not able to hold on. I don't know what it was. I just remember there was a, a Beasley drop on I, the, towards the sidelines. Yeah, I think it was, like, a perfect throw. Yeah, and then he just dropped Beasley it. just dropped it. Yeah. Um, I think Gabe Davis should go in. So I have a lot of takeaways from this game. I'm obsessed with Gabe Davis. Me too. And I think that been. he should be the number three, and Sanders should be the wild four that comes in. Because Gabe Davis is phenomenal. He catches everything. Knox had a couple good passes, which I like because I like Knox. Um, also, we our play calling was not good, which so, is going back to the whole thing that I do not like Dable. So the there was a couple points that I've had a few conversations about that with different people. So it seemed like the game, the game plan was A. B was working but not used a lot. And for some reason... We weren't just adjusting to what was working and what was, wasn't working. So they took away – their defensive line took away our entire gameplay. So why didn't we incorporate screens? Why didn't we run the ball more? Especially when, we're, like, apparently it was six yards a pop with Singletary. Right. So you do those things to basically get the ball out. Is that an Allen thing? Is that a day ball thing? Like, I don't know what the disconnect is there, but – I don't know if it's a hundred percent straight play calling because Allen is at the point now where he's just making audibles. Right. So I no clue. Yeah. Also remember, we have a last year's full season left with sixteen remaining right, games. Exactly, yeah. And technically this is like the fourth preseason game. Yeah, no just, one's panicking. Correct. Real Bills fans are not panicking. No. Everything's fine. Yeah. It we just played an elite defense. People and, don't think that they're elite because they sucked last second half of last year, but they're an elite defense. And we get better every week. Correct. We did the same thing last year. We got better every single week. But the thing is, is Allen threw over 50 times. That's a play calling thing because a majority of With those him. were empty backfields and five receiver sets. We should not be in those. I know that we want to be a predominantly passing team, but we're taking away the complete option of doing a play action play. Yeah. That doesn't exist. I was watching the Cleveland versus Kansas City game. Even a City screen, game. dude. Right, yeah. I was watching the Cleveland versus Kansas City game and the amount of play action calls that they did because they trust Clyde Edwards Hilaire to run it was outstanding. Yeah. Mahomes was able to swing out and there was an open receiver because the linebacker bit at the run. Yeah. That's the stuff that we need to incorporate and people don't understand that that's important. Well, and right. there was another Because they don't watch football. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> there was another huge thing that it was a fourth and in, like inches. And then our play call was so dumb that we decided that we were going to fake QB sneak it. Oh, that's right. And then and their then corner blew it, it up. Yeah, lateral it eight yards back. Yeah, their nickel DB just destroyed that play, sniffed it a mile away. Yeah. It took forever to develop. And like, I was listening to uh, WGR this morning, and Sal Capaccio said that he thought that it was a 
um, a game plan because Alan said we had this plan in our back pocket. So Sal thought that they were practicing that play all week and they needed a chance to justify it. So fourth and one, they're like, let's just do this play. It's going to work because it's cute and it works in our um, training. It works in practice. So let's try it out. And then it got blown and up. And then it just got blown up. <laughs> it was it was such a terrible play call. If you're fourth and inches, why are you throwing it eight yards back? Right. There is an option that it works and you get like a 40-yard play, right. but that's not safe whatsoever. Right. It was so dumb. So no one's panicking. All real Bills fans are not panicking. It was the first week. We're fine. We're still going to go into the playoffs regardless. It just sucks that it happened. Yeah. Especially at the home opener. 16-1, and one, baby. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Can't win them all if you don't lose the first. What? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so it was it was a good game. But I, I'm excited for next week. Play Miami. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so, leading into – how much time are we at? 48. Okay. Uh, there's so many – dude, it's been so long, man. I just want to keep talking. It's like we got to record next week or something then. <laughs> We do need to double up because next week it'll be easy to double up next week. One, because we have so much left to talk about. And two, we have a packed episode for next week because we have a ton of announcements coming up. We have a ton of analytics to go through. We have a lot of content for next week. So it'll be very easy to record this next episode like now. Right. All right. See you later. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it'll be very easy. <clears throat> I'm excited. Not worried. No, not at all. The scheduling aspects. Uh, yeah, we do have a lot going on. We got a lot upcoming. So, uh, update for you guys inside and outside of the podcast. The, uh, today's Monday, Wednesday, I start my new job. So working that all out, my, the only lingering question is like, when the hell do I not work? Like, when do I, when is my day end? And then I can figure out everything from there. The, once that's answered, I'm good. Uh, so yeah, I'm starting my new job, totally new industry, totally new career field. I'm excited for it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a blast doing that starting Wednesday. <clears throat> we got two different meetings this week, um, as well as a interview got postponed. It got pushed, uh, to the right a couple weeks, uh, like two weeks, uh, which is fine. We got our backlog, so we're good. We have a interview next week and then we're probably, I mean, realistically, we're going to record twice next week for weekly episodes just because we're Jews and we have a lot to discuss. Um, speaking of that, we should probably, like, write down uh, episode outlines of, like, what we want to discuss and yeah. hit. I did not give a fact of the day for this episode. Correct. So, uh, fact of the day, the, I'll keep it honeymoon base. Santorini used to be an entire circle, like our logo. And then a volcanic eruption erupted. And split the island into the current Santorini, which is like half of the circle. And then there's two smaller volcanoes and then a separate island. Hmm. And then the rest of the volcano is now underwater to the east of Santorini, if you're looking at it on the map. And then there are earthquakes daily that you can and cannot feel, but it essentially releases the pressure and prevents a ridiculously large volcanic eruption from reoccurring so it's a good thing oh, yeah. so those are your facts Hear that everybody day. earthquakes are good things that's right it's basically earth's fart um and let's see that's funnier than people <laughs> wanted it to be uh let's see outside of that we got um, a lot of events coming up too we've been getting booked bro we got a lot of stuff going on we're filming two events coming up we're filming we're- yeah, and we're, we're filming, period. Yeah. So that is changing our entire YouTube channel. Right. A lot. Yeah, we're it, filming a lot. We're doing whiskey tasting events. We have two of them in September. And we're doing at least three filming events happening. I'm sorry. We have three tasting events in September. And we're filming three different events in September. And it's halfway through September. So we're going to be busy. Yeah. October is going to be nuts. End of the year is going to be sweet. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Can't wait to rake it in. Just kidding. We do this for free. Correct. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of that, if you are new, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube because that could be a way for us to make money. We appreciate it. The uh, You can follow us on the Buffalo Happy Hour on YouTube, Buffalo Happy Hour on Facebook, Buffalo Happy Hour 12 on Instagram. We don't use Twitter because it's evil and toxic and annoying and we're right. over it. The <clears throat> We are on TikTok, Buffalo Happy Hour on TikTok. Yep. And the 
Uh, let's see. We don't have a business Snapchat because it's obnoxious. If you want to email us, feel free to email us at Buffalo Happy Hour Podcast dot at gmail.com. Nailed it. And that would be used if you want to book us for a tasting. Um, if you want to buy a bottle of our single barrel that we drank during this weekly episode. Um, again, 80-20, 80% cognac, 20% toasted. It's 57.8% ABV, which works out to about 115 proof. So we appreciate any and all support. We are most likely going to be doing a merchandise drop coming up in the coming months. So be on the lookout for that. And then we also have another meeting coming up for tumblers. Mm -hmm. So if you are a, let's see, interested, ecstatic, depressed, want something new uh, in your house, and you want a Buffalo Happy Hour podcast branded tumbler that's very similar to a Yeti. Or anything, really. They do anything. Yeah. Then reach out to us and let us know, and then we will get you on our list for a tumbler, and we will go from there. So thank you all. Yep. As Mike said, we did talk about this Buffalo Happy Hour single barrel during last week's Wednesday Whiskey Review. So if you are interested, go back and check it out. We're very excited to partner with Record to release our first ever single barrel. We only have a few left. So if you have not, let us know that you want to pre-order one. You're kind of running out of time. Um, not any pressure or anything. We will be doing more single barrels in the future. But for this first inaugural batch single barrel with three quart bourbon, uh, we are running low. So if you want a, a bottle, please yep. let us know. Yep. Um, they will be available at Addie's. Again, like Mike was saying, they're about 116 proof, 115 proof, 80% cognac, 20% toast. And uh, we have our whiskey notes on the board for you right now that you can then look at. We'll post a picture of it and go check out that review because it's a delicious bottle. To me, this is exactly what you wanted from a tasting standpoint it's not sweet it's dry but it's very packed full of flavor i like it a lot yeah absolutely well thank you everybody mike i am so happy that you're back because we gotta grind yes and we we're do. going to because we don't ever stop so thank you everybody for tuning in we are the buffalo happy Hour podcast please remember to drink responsibly be a good person and michael do not litter we're out